bubble beep. Aloha and welcome back to another space weather update with myself Alexis of Ascension Diaries. From the top down we're going to be discussing what the sun has delivered and how the earth has responded. Last night at around 1 a.m. here in Phoenix, Arizona there was a M-class solar flare recorded out of the sun. Earlier that night there was a geomagnetic storm warning for just the most minor geomagnetic storm. So I actually dreamt last night of looking up and seeing aurora in the sky, which was awesome. I have physically seen it before as growing up in Canada, but I don't see it very often anymore. So very interesting. That may be giving me a sign that we are going to be getting an even larger solar flare, and I may see some, some aurora here out in Arizona. It isn't unheard of even the last two years. It's happened multiple times, at least over by Flagstaff for sure. Flagstaff, Arizona being the highest volcanic point pretty much in Arizona, a very holy place. So that a little bit of geography aside, we're just on the screen, you can see the direction that this wave exited the sun. As you see that little white dot there on the left and a wave exiting it, that wave is going away from our planet, which is our little yellow dot here on the right hand side of that white dot over here and a little better view of our planet in an isolated setting here just to see how that will still affect us. You can see still this little cord behind the planet sort of representing our magnetic field <laughs> as well as it bends around this wave of energy which is still going to impact which you can see it's growing joining this wave and growing and moving past so let's see what day that that's going to impact around the 20th it looks like so it's going to take a little while longer for that to kind of circle back and impact our planet since it wasn't a direct hit but let's just quickly look at the x-ray radiation of that solar flare and coronal mass ejection as you can see here it was around utc eight o'clock that this happened universal time on december 14th about you know a good decent way into the actual day so far but middle of the night here for us in <laughs> north and south america excuse me those of you still getting over some sort of cold flu symptoms congratulations you are at the uh, the leading edge of genetic mutation. <laughs> and with this, uh, this constant x-ray radiation from the sun, you're mutating again. So if you're feeling a little uncomfortable this morning, it could have been just all that extra cellular mutation going on to adjust for all this sunlight and maybe a bigger solar flare, like I said, that I just dreamt about potentially coming. This is the evidence of that geomagnetic storm so after the sun kind of gets heavy we start getting more aurora but it wasn't a significant amount last night so we're still kind of waiting those of you who maybe stayed up to watch the geminid meteor shower last night because if you saw my video or whatever i hope you saw something cool let's take a peek about what else is going on okay the moon obviously really quick we're still in the new moon phase here but we're getting into the waxing crescent, and we're getting into Capricorn energy. So we got your, your bones, <laughs> your joints, a little bit of a different vibe than your sacrum going on. So we've got knees, skin, hair, potentially more of an issue today. So just a heads up on that. Let's begin with the spaceweather.com just to see the solar wind speed. It's under 400. We should be okay today so far. That geminid, let's see that meteor shower. Here's some footage of it over the Czech Republic. <clears throat> excuse me very very beautiful this is so interesting too with this photography because you're seeing all of this other redness in the sky which to me is actually kind of interesting so I'm not sure what they actually captured in this photograph but certainly some wonderful uh, potential for photographers out there right now so if you want to get into it it's a good time here again is this infamous comet that went by the sun. We covered it extensively in yesterday's video. Since this comet and the coronal mass ejection that follows, there it is, there wasn't too much like physical looking explosions except for that one. And I think honestly the footage hasn't even finished loading. We're probably even waiting to look at the footage of that <clears throat> coronal mass ejection and solar flare that we just got today. So let's look at, excuse me, Let's look at the atmosphere and see how it's behaving yesterday, 
I did a video about this and I was showing you some of the wrong footage. I didn't realize that these pages actually hadn't loaded properly and uh, I was telling you about a totally different date. So weirdly enough, they were still correlating even beyond that time, which was kind of interesting. So that was totally accidental. Won't happen again on the channel, I'm sorry. But this particular chart was correct. So everything I said about this is still accurate. You can still see that that sound going on that was happening on the 12th. A little bit more of that sound has, I would say, continued to give us a little bit of evidence that it's still existing in some form. But there's a little bit more of an addition here with these bizarre vertical lines that are just in a certain range of frequencies here. So this is just the anomaly I would point out today with the footage, but no other significance here showing some sort of explosion or major impact on our on our planet so far, at least according to this data. Here's the correct version for the amplitudes and the frequencies and the quality. Okay, Italy yesterday, like I, if you don't remember or you didn't watch, there was some major issues with this data. Again, similar issues today, but not as severe. I would say there's still missing bands of information that doesn't make any sense. Here's all the missing information I was talking about yesterday. It almost seems like a shadow instead of deleted data, which is even more bizarre. I'm not sure how or what that means. I don't. I haven't played with um, data production technology and software, so I, I don't get as big of an idea about how you can mess with your numbers and change your graphs and charts for the software you're using. But I, so I don't exactly know what's possible all the time with this type of software, but I'm not sure how this is possible, <laughs> but I'm curious. So if you have any ideas, I'd love to hear it. I genuinely want to grow my intelligence through all of this. So I'd appreciate your feedback. Those of you who've made it through life longer than 30 years, I would love that. So let's look at the rest of those locations. Like I said, South Africa has been pulling out the wind last video. It's still going much more intensely than the other countries but it is certainly dropping in intensity. We will see how it behaves around the solstice though. Basically what we're looking for next, but you can see here additional evidence of that location. Location number six over the last few days has been pretty activated, still going. Global consciousness is kind of going out of coherency right now. It's probably because everybody on the West Coast is waking up for work <laughs> and they're a little incoherent going, what was that dream last night? They're not really thinking about you at this time yet, but give them an hour, give them a coffee break, and they'll be ready to go. <laughs> My one pet peeve is how the universe in this planet is running on coffee and sugar and where that even that industry began and how it persisted is just has a lot of density and it's genuinely a drug that people are doing. And uh, I believe that the anxiety and tension on our planet could be maybe halved if people just stopped drinking coffee. It would be one of the most interesting human experiments, I think, in history. If we just took like a week off of coffee, like what would happen to our planet? I would say maybe two weeks. <laughs> I mean, we did that for COVID, so why not do it for coffee? Just setting that in there, I have to. So here is the impact zone of our planet. The geomagnetic field around it seems to be actually pretty good, pretty, pretty inflated, pretty ready to go. So no problems here that I'm seeing. I'm seeing some problems here on my Instagram. If you guys just can see really quick, if I scroll over the viewership I'm getting on these posts varies pretty extensively. We've got 113 likes here, 45 here, six here, 18, eight, 76, 60, 81, 687. So this is like a meme stack that I do. Those two the best <laughs> with the algorithm. So anything I'm telling you that's of any sort of space weather importance, except for maybe a couple really extreme looking photographs, um, for the most part, it's the meme stacks that get the most attention. So if you're like, Alexis, why do you keep sharing these crazy unhinged memes? Um, because I want to, it, it also helps keep the page alive and keep the outreach. So it's going to keep happening. <laughs> when it comes to earthquakes, wow, that was strange. <laughs> the image literally just exited stage left. That was weird. <laughs> <It> just. <scrolled. laughs> 
All right, well, that's a little bit unpredictable and I don't know what to do about that, but I was gonna show you a picture of the Philippines as they did get another earthquake. So we spoke too soon yesterday. They were not done with the earthquake situation and they'll probably body a few more as the sun keeps releasing through those sunspots and so on. Did we look at those yet? It looks like we kind of skipped the images of the sun. So let's take a peek about what we're gonna be dealing with. All these areas are potential areas for solar flares. This is the magnetogram. So again, magnetically strong areas. <clears throat> 82, 8, 79, 77 are the coronal holes that we're dealing with. And I believe, yeah, we've got a new thing on our list here. Oh, it's not even fully updated yet. So one, this is going to update. Yes, please resubmit and update your data, my love. Oh, it doesn't want to. Well, it will, and it eventually will have an M5 right here. So that'll be, it's M5.8, I believe it was. So it's the biggest flare we've gotten this month. So that does also make sense why I did a video yesterday. Here's our Aurora field just to look. I believe we made it through this video today. So we are going to promote Conscious Crypto Academy again. Please go to join.consciouscrypto.info to sign up, get your free call, and figure out how Jace can help you with your crypto portfolio as we are openly taking students at this time. I don't know if you've been watching the markets, but uh, it'll be great to watch them today. It's something I'm feeling intuitively. Today's tarot card is the star card, number 17. So for good health, we've got renewal, faith, spirituality, inspiration, and hope. And if you're not vibing in the frequency of the star card, you're going to be experiencing despair, disappointment, illness, and disconnection. This is going to test your faith. The star card is always here to test your faith. So if you're having issues trusting in something or uh, going through with something new, just by the light of the star, you should have this renewed faith today. So perhaps this is going to kind of kick you in the butt to start that new thing and do that new thing. This may have been exactly what you need to hear. If you need a reading from me, my website is back up and running as of today. Oh, no, it's not apparently, but it should be. So you can go to ascensiondiaries.com and check out a session with myself when you're free. Otherwise, this video is over and I will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.